right, so Doug, I was teaching a class the other night, and somebody raised a really good question. They said, do I need to be on a 38 degree slope when I dig my snow pits to get a representative result to the slope I want to ski? And I think right. people think you need to be on a steep slope to get uh, accurate results in your stability tests. Right. Uh, what do you think? Well, we used to think that. Uh -huh. We actually, you know, there's a... Uh, I've had two cases early in my career when I was digging snow pits on 36, 37 degree slopes when the slope, I either triggered the slope in an avalanche below me, like two feet below me, or another time I had it collapse and crack right in my snow pit wall. So it's the old thinking was yes, you, you had to get out onto a, a similar slope, you know, is what we used to think. But around 2010, uh, we did a study um, with Carl Berkland and we looked at extended column tests and then the next year at compression tests to see what the difference was as we, you know, is it, what is it on a, on a flat slope? What is it on a 15, 20, 25, 30? And what we found, um, which is not intuitive, is that it did not matter um, whether you were on a 35, a 37 degree slope, if you got an ECT 20, ECTP20, if you were on the flats, you would also get an ECTP20. So as long as the structure is similar, it doesn't really matter what your slope angle is. Right. You'll, I think the, the main message there is don't expose yourself to avalanche terrain to try to collect data. Right. Or to dig a snow pit. Because when we're, when we're doing those tests, what we're doing is we're measure, measuring initiation of propagation, and we know that... Um, when we get collapses on the flats, that's basically an avalanche. You know, we, mm -hmm. we fractured and a, and a weak layer propagated that fracture across the meadow. So we know propagation happens on the flats. And if we were on something steeper, we'd be in an avalanche. You know, so, uh, yeah. so we know we can get propagation on the flats. The interesting part was just that it took no more force. It, took, it didn't take anything extra to get it going. Now, visually, um, when we're on steep slopes, if you get it to break, then it like pops off and a lot of times it slides into the pit and it's kind of dramatic, you know, yeah. but but you don't have to expose yourself in avalanche terrain to get the data to find out if you're safe being in avalanche terrain. And I have to say that out of all the snow science that's been done in my career, that that is probably one of the top two things that has come out, that has changed the way I do business, and has definitely made me operate a lot safer, knowing that I can do a stability test on an adjacent 25 degree slope. Yeah, and it, that column does not need to fall into your lap to, no. to symbolize an unstable slope. Right. As long as that thing collapses or propagates, yep. you know it's an unstable result, and that's going to be likely what's going to happen on a steeper slope yeah. adjacent to your closing representative to what you're doing. So stay on shallow angle slopes if you can. There's no need to increase your risk. Yeah, that sounds good.